What's up guys, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the mindset section of being a real estate investor or of being an entrepreneur. Uh, so continuing on from what we talked about last week, uh, this week I wanna talk about imposter syndrome. So if you are an entrepreneur, most likely you either know what this is or you've experienced it at some point in your career, uh, but it can be something that really holds us back as entrepreneurs and that's why I wanna kind of expose it today, uh, help you realize what it is, how it can affect your business, and then how you can work around it. In entrepreneurship, imposter syndrome is basically you feeling like uh, you aren't who you say you are, right? Like I'm acting as if, a great example in real estate investing is I'm acting as if I'm buying a house, but I don't feel like I'm the person that buys a house. I don't feel like a real estate investor, right? Similarly, as an entrepreneur, just in general, uh, that same feeling of being an imposter, right? is lots of people are looking to me to be the owner, to be the executive, right? You're supposed to be the CEO, you're supposed to be the one in charge, the one that has the answers, and you don't feel like that's who you are, right? It isn't a part of your identity yet. So the difference there is, uh, is it part of your identity or is it not? Most of the time, the way things get ingrained into our identity is because people tell us that's who we are, right? So we have people sewing into us. A lot of times that's our parents, things like that. Uh, what you'll also find there is if you have people sewing negatively into you, like you're not an entrepreneur, you're not an executive, who do you think you are? That can also that can make imposter syndrome worse and slow you down even more as an investor or as an investor or as an entrepreneur. And so we want to avoid imposter syndrome altogether because it's useless. It's completely garbage, right? Uh, and what you find is there's really two paths that you can take. So two paths that you can take as an entrepreneur or as a real estate investor. And it looks kind of like this. So I would say that on the y-axis here, which is this guy up here, we have maybe motivation and excitement, right? Your excitement for what you're doing. And so, or your passion, we could say. So when you're first learning about an opportunity, right? So a new opportunity as an entrepreneur, you're like, I'm learning about real estate investing, or I'm learning about day trading or e-commerce or whatever, nail salon business, right? When we're first learning about the opportunity, right? The business opportunity, that's where our excitement or our passion or motivation starts to peak, right? For the, for the potential there. So we learn about uh, whole, like wholesaling real estate. We start to hear about it. We start to see uh, what the potential is there for us as far as income, as far as building our companies. And that's where we get excited, right? That starts to build. We're like, whoa, this is cool. I'm freaking pumped. I like this. We're doing a lot of research. Until we get to this point where we make a commitment, right? We say, you know what? I've done enough research. This is what I'm going to go after. This is what I'm going to make my business and we're going to rock it. Like, let's go for it, right? So you make a commitment to yourself um, that, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting lots of time and effort into building this business. Now, from that commitment point, uh, we see this very commonly with investors and with entrepreneurs, especially uh, this, I would say that this reoccurs even if you add a new business uh, to your lineup, right? You've already completed one business, but not, now you're adding a new one. You can still fall into this, but it especially occurs when you're starting your first business for most people, right? Most people do not already have an identity that they are a successful entrepreneur before they are right? They don't have a definition that they're a successful real estate investor that buys houses before they are. And so they feel like they're faking it, right? Now, as soon as you make this commitment, you actually are the entrepreneur. You actually are the real estate investor, right? So it's actually, it's a lie that you aren't, but that feeling can still linger there. And that feeling can bring a lot of fear uh, and different things it can bring fear, anxiety, and making more or less making you feel like you're fake. You're, you know, this, you really aren't cut out for this, that type of feeling. That's all imposter syndrome, right? So take some time and say, hey, is that something that I'm struggling with? Because what imposter syndrome does to your motivation, it's a normal thing, most people have it, right? Because you're like, well, I'm supposed to be a real estate investor, but I haven't bought any houses yet. So am I really a real estate investor, right? Okay, that's imposter syndrome, those types of questions, right? And so that starts to kill your passion, your motivation, your energy, and it brings it way down yonder, all the way to here. Okay, that's where a lot of investors are like, all right, forget it, I'm out, you know, I wasn't made, I wasn't cut out for this, apparently I'm not an investor, ugh, I shouldn't have faked it, you know, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy real estate, which you don't need to be a real estate investor, right? Uh, you just need that commitment, that makes you a real estate investor. And so a lot of people cop out and they drop out right here, right? They're like, okay, this wasn't fun, my motivation is at an all-time low, it's even lower than when I first started learning about this, right? So I quit. And so a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize they're suffering from imposter syndrome and they quit right here right, right at the bottom. 
Now, if you're extremely disciplined and you're like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make this happen, and you just keep working through that, right? Even though you know you have imposter syndrome, you just keep working through it, you're like, let's go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. Well, guess what? In entrepreneurship and in life and everywhere, if you work hard, you put in the effort, you get the results, right? There is a direct, very nice direct correlation. You work hard, you get the results. You stay with it, you get the results, right? If you don't quit, you ultimately win. And so same, that's what happens here, right? So if you stay with it, you'll start to ride right back up and you're gonna build up your expertise, right? You're gonna start to feel more and more and more like a real real estate investor because you stayed with it, you started to do some deals, right? You started to do some deals, you started to realize, hey, I understand contracts now better than most people. I understand how to do this, to acquire a property, to sell a property better than most people. And that starts to really build up, uh, you start to build up your expertise, right? And that builds your confidence, you start to experience a lot of success, and that raises your excitement for the opportunity again, right? So it brings it right back up here. And so now you're back up here, you've got great excitement, great motivation, great success, and everything's awesome, okay? so. You've got two ways to get here. We all wanna to get to where we're confident in what we're doing. We have it in our identity that we are a real estate investor, that we are an entrepreneur. We all wanna get there and we all wanna have a great success. You can take two routes. One, your motivation, your excitement goes in the tank, right? Which is where you let imposter syndrome take over and define you, right? And say like, no, you're not really this yet, right? That's imposter syndrome. Just throw that crap out, it's useless, right? If you let that take over, then you gotta ride this emotional roller coaster and this requires an insane amount of discipline, right? Uh, this is one of those things that everyone's like, yeah, I can just deal with this, you know, I'll just let this kind of bug me and stay in my brain. Uh, it's, it's like when, you, when you're like, I'm gonna work out so hard tomorrow, right? And then tomorrow you start working out and you're like, you know what, it's kinda hard, maybe the next day. That's what you're doing here is you're kinda saying, if you let this persist, then you set up a ton of hard work for yourself. When you get down here, you have no motivation, but then you still have to work hard. But if you work through it, you'll get back up here. What's better is to identify that you have some imposter syndrome and fight against it, right? That way you can maintain peak excitement and commitment all the way through here. So the first thing is realize that imposter syndrome is a falsehood, right? There's nothing that says you are this or you are that, right? That's just an internal dialogue that you have with yourself. And we can change our internal dialogues, right? If your internal dialogue says like, what are you doing here, right? If you have a, con a consistent feeling of like, you're not supposed to be doing something or you might get in trouble, right? I would say that's all tied to imposter syndrome, right? It's all garbage. And so we can change our internal dialogue to say like, I am a real estate investor, right? I am an entrepreneur. I you wouldn't even be interested in this if you weren't, right? I feel like God cuts certain people out of different, you know, like of different material. This person's supposed to be this way. If you're naturally drawn to this, if you're like, this is what I want to do, Okay, well that's how you were cut out, right? So go for it. So it's not a question of like, oh, you know, should, should I be doing this, am I an entrepreneur? If you got here, if you were interested in the opportunity and you got up to where you're like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, at that moment when you commit and say, I'm gonna do this, that's your identity change, right? Now your internal dialogue is, I am cut out for this, I am a real estate investor, I am an entrepreneur, this is gonna go great, right? It's, it's consistent optimism. We don't let ourselves fall, take this slide down and let the imposter syndrome monkey jump on our backs and pull us down right one of the easiest ways to do this besides obviously watching your internal dialogue is what I would call question affirmations so question affirmations are very similar to affirmations right so affirmations are I'm you know you look at yourself in the mirror and you say I'm a real estate investor I'm an awesome real estate investor right I think those are great I think one step further that has been more effective for me is if you turn those into questions right why am I such an awesome real estate investor and the reason why I do that right, or make that change is, uh, even if you've, okay, taking it back here, if you go to college, right, think of like when you're in college or high school and you're taking a test, if you've ever read any test prep books, right, they say if you don't know the answer to a question, read it and then leave it and come back to it at the end of the test, right? The reason why is because your subconscious is gonna work on it and give you an answer when you come back, right? It's gonna keep working on it even though you're continuing on. Similarly, if you're like, what's the name of that guy from that movie? You know, what's the name of the parrot in this movie or whatever, right? And then two days later, you're like, oh, I remembered what it was. That was your subconscious continuing to work on that problem, even though you weren't. And so that happens when we pose a question to our subconscious. When we tell ourselves that we're something, yes, that builds up, just like builds us up, just like when someone tells us, you're an awesome entrepreneur, that builds us up, helps build identity. But when we ask ourselves, why am I such an awesome entrepreneur, right, with that positive uh, demeanor, when we ask ourselves that, it poses it to our subconscious, and our subconscious will find reasons why we are, right? And so just flat out telling ourselves we're an awesome entrepreneur without the reasoning, 
right? I feel like is good to a point, but doesn't bring a lot of backing to your identity. Whereas if your subconscious is saying, you're an awesome entrepreneur because you did this on Wednesday, because you did this tonight, because you thought about this, because this is how your brain works. All right, well then you really start to believe, man, I am an awesome entrepreneur, right? So what I would do is, if you've got time right now, take five minutes, write out five uh, question affirmations, right? So start with a positive affirmation and then turn it into a question that you're posing to your subconscious. So take, write, take a quick couple minutes, write five of those, and then repeat those to yourself throughout the day. Say them out loud, right, in the morning. It doesn't have to be necessarily like a morning ritual. You get up, you look at the mirror, you're like, what up, and say those. Uh, but like when you're driving around, no one else is in the car, say them out loud, right? Pose those questions positively in a positive attitude to your subconscious. Uh, and then I would love to hear uh, what it does for you, how it encourages you, and then how it helps you fight off this imposter monkey uh, and stay on this upward path of having a lot of motivation, a lot of passion uh, for what you're doing and building in real estate investment and in your entrepreneurial journey. So cool. Love you guys. Uh, thanks for liking, commenting, uh, and sharing. Uh, any questions that you guys have, drop them in the comments, and then we'll make sure to tackle them in the next video. Thanks, guys. See you next week.